everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sari and these are my knitting podcast videos that you are watching at the moment. Um, if you are new here, uh, extra big welcome. Um, I've been a bit too lazy about making videos for the past year or so. I always say that I will make more and I will make a comeback, but that hasn't really happened yet. Uh, so I'm not promising anything at the moment. Um, the last normal um, episode that I filmed was back in January and it's already mid-May and this is only the second um, video that I'm filming for this year. That um, I'm that kind of video where I talk about what I'm knitting at the moment and uh, what I've been making lately anyway. Um, I've been super busy for the past six months or so with my upcoming book. So um, I've been making a book of my knitting patterns and it will come out next autumn, um, probably sometime um, in September earliest, at the end of August, but I think September is more probable. I don't have um, the exact publication date yet, but as soon as I know more about that, I will share that with you. And the book has been keeping me super busy and it has been quite a lot of work. The uh, previous book that I made that uh, came out two years ago and only in Finnish. First of all, it was less work because it was only in one language and now I'm making it simultaneously uh, in two languages. So I'm uh, working both in, in English and in, uh, with uh, English and uh, Finnish patterns at, at the moment. So it's a lot of more work to translate everything and keep track of the test knitting um, in two languages. But um, yeah, uh, a lot of, uh, lots of work. So the book will consist of um, about 20 new patterns. At the moment the tally is at 22, but we have to see at um, a layout phase if I have to drop something out because um, of how many pages and if, if I want to add, for example, more photos or something like that. But there's going to be 22 patterns. All of them are new and things that I haven't released earlier. So. Roughly half of them are sweaters, cardigans, and there are also two sleeveless tops. And the, the other half is um, for smaller accessories. Um, I have, I think, three pairs of socks and three hats and a couple of scarves and so on. And mostly cables, but also some lace, some very simple stockinette stitch. Um, I think one has uh, a fair isle pattern over the yoke, like an Icelandic yoke. Um, but yeah, um, I don't want to show a um, rune. More of it, um, we'll start uh, talking about the book more uh, in, in the summer when I can start showing you all the knits and and so on but at still at this moment I want to keep the details um, a bit secret but the book project has kept me super busy um, it has taken quite a lot of my time uh, first of all to to design everything to grade everything to write all the patterns um, then everything has been tech edited, translated. Um, I've done a lot of proofreading already. Um, we had a photo shoot for everything. Um, so all, all the needs have been um, photoed. And then at the moment I'm running all the test needs. Um, 
my initial plan wasn't that I'm running everything at the moment, like at the same time, but um, due to some timetable challenges, that's the reality that um, happened. So unfortunately, I have to um, run all the test needs at the same time. It's quite a lot of work. It has been a bit hard to find test meters for everything when you're running 20 plus test needs at the same time. And also uh, I have, I've had to have tighter schedule for the test needs that, uh, than I normally do or, or, or like to have. But uh, sometimes life doesn't go as planned. So that's the um, way it is now. But anyway, I'm super happy about everything in the book and I can't wait to start showing you more of everything that I have been making. Um, but it has been quite a lot to, to juggle the, the book and at the same time trying to um, keep my own business going because I can't put my business on hold. This is... Um, I still have to keep doing my month-to-month -month business. I can just like press pause on that and just work on the book. So it has been quite a lot of work and that's why um, I haven't had time to make these videos. Although uh, I have wanted to and have, I have many times thought that okay, I, I will film something quickly, but yeah, I just haven't had the time. But I could start showing you um, what I have been knitting lately and then I can show you what I have on my needles at the moment. That's usually how these videos go for me. Um, uh, I've been making a lot of summer patterns at the moment um, because summer is coming or it's almost here. It's um, or <laughs> maybe in some other parts of the world, uh, summer is already going on strong, but in Finland we are still at the late spring phase. Um, the st summer is almost here, but not not quite. Um, but anyway, a lot of summer tops and summer tees that I have been working on, so I can't wait to show them. To you. Um, this one that I'm wearing at the moment, this is the Piazza tee and it looks like this. Um, this is one of my last year's um, favorite patterns. So this was knitted from top down, um, first, first to back and then stitches are picked along the shoulders and, and the, the front are, front is uh, knitted until the armholes, then everything is joined and knitted in the round. And it has like this cable and, and some, some lace and bubbles and also some mustache. So all the uh, elements that I usually like in my, my patterns. Um, I knitted this one in Brooklyn Tweed's um, Arbor, which is a DK weight yarn. And this is the colorway hammock. But I think this might be a bit to warm for summer months so this year I have been thinking about making a second one but um, in some other yarn um, I like knitting for olives pure silk and I have for example this um, colorway powder so it's like um, Slightly pinkish, warm uh, brown, a really nice color. Um, so this is a light fingering weight yarn, but if it's held double, then it um, can easily be used as a substitute for for DK weight yarn. So this is one option that I have been thinking for for this one. Um, but yeah, I really want to make it in some other yarn that is not so woolen 
so I think I would get much more use of it. So at the moment this is not really a summer sweater for me or it's a summer sweater um, for those days in Finland when it's really cold but if it's warm then it's too much. It's more like a, a layering piece or a tra transitional piece for like early spring um, when a full sweater is too much but you still kind of like have to wear your trench coat so this is perfect like to have this and a trench coat and if it gets too warm then you can uh, ditch the trench coat, tr trench coat and just wear, wear, wear this one but for warmer um, weathers, warmer months it's, it's too much so um, that still, I haven't still picked the perfect yarn for this. Uh, that's well, the Knitted for Olives yarn is one of my options, but um, still have to think if um, I have something something else in my stash that I could use for this. I was also thinking about making a Piazza tea and it along um, during the summer because um, I want to make one and. Ever since last summer I have been thinking about making a long sleeved version so that would be I think that would be really nice um, to make a, kind of like a knit along around that. Either uh, I have been thinking whether to have um, to knit along um, about a specific pattern or um, if I should uh, just host like a summer the top knit along where you can pick any of my um, uh, top uh, or <laughs> tea patterns and make one of them. Um, if you have any thoughts about this you can always drop me a line in the comments below this video and as always I will write all the pattern names, all the yarn names, everything that I mention um, in the um, description section of this video. So below this video you can find all the all the yarn names, all the pattern names and links if there if I have links. So you can easily just um, go and, and see them from there. For example I will add the link to the Piazza T in my Ravelry store and write down the yarn names that I mentioned below this video so you can easily check them out from there. Um, speaking about knit alongs, I was going to first <laughs> start by showing you what I have been making but I want to talk about my summer sock knit along. So the summer sock knit along is something that I have been hosting for um, three years already. This is going to be the fourth year and the idea for the summer sock knit along was for me kind of like to challenge myself to to use up more of my leftover yarns because every time you use like a fingering weight 100 gram skin of yarn for a sock project um, there's going to be leftovers um, if you knit like normal socks. So I wanted to kind of like challenge myself to use those leftovers so the idea of my summer sock knit along is that we're going to have four new sock patterns. So I'm going to design four new sock patterns, especially for the knit along. Of course, you can always buy the sock patterns separately in my Ravelry store. You don't have to join the call to be able to knit the socks. But um, the idea is to have three skins of yarn that we are going to use for four pairs of socks. So the last pair is going to use leftovers from those uh, three um, skeins uh, that we used for the previous socks. And this year I have teamed up with uh, a Finnish dyer called Sajewool. And we have made these um, sets of yarn. They are going to be on sale very soon. So I started with the with, uh, purple one. It's their uh, Merino Sock Base and it's called Blackberry Yogurt and this is um, one of their core colorways. So this is already available in their um, web store. So you can already get this one. And these two are kind of like uh, special colorways that are made especially for this summer. And they will be I think only sold as, as a set. So you can get all these three yarns as a set. 
And these two, I don't think they have names yet because they are new colorways, especially created for this. So this is going to be my um, June sock yarn. I already have my June sock over here. I will show it to you soon. Uh, this is going to be my July sock and August sock. And then I'm going to use the leftovers of all three for my September sock. I think I have started the uh, summer sock did along in May um, previous years, but like I said, the book has been keeping me so busy that I uh, haven't even had time to think about summer sock call until now when things are starting to get a bit easier, um, a bit more calm around here. So I started my first sock. So this is going to be released on June 1st. It doesn't have a name yet. I have to come up with a name. And it's cuff down. It's going to have a, a French heel, heel flap construction. And this is the top of the sock. So it has a, like this Japanese a lace pattern, lace and cable pattern. And then on the back side of the sock is just like twisted stitches and cables. So this is the, the first sock and it's going to be, like I said, released on June 1st. And I will be making the Knit Along uh, Ravelry Group pages also very soon. And you can go to my Ravelry Group, it's Sari Nordlund's Ravelry Group. Um, on Ravelry. Uh, I will also link it below this video so you can easily check it out. That's where I usually um, call for all my test knits. So if you want to test knit for me, that's the place to be. And also I host my knit alongs over there. So all the knit along information will be in the Ravelry group as well as place for people to chat and, and share their progress. But yeah, this is the, the first first sock of this year's summer sock knit along. So here you can see all the summer knits that I have made so far this year. When you put them all together it looks like quite a lot, even though I just said that I haven't really had time to do anything except the book. But apparently I have had time to <laughs> knit quite a lot. Um, let's start with this one. This is the first summer pattern that I released for this year. And this is the Garina t-shirt. And I used Knitting for Olives Pure Silk. It was the same yarn that I just showed you that I was going to use for, for a second version of the Piazza T. So this is the colorway called Cardamom. And the Karina T has like this really nice cable pattern, as you can see here. And the same pattern is also on the back of the shirt. And it has short sleeves with like folded, folded cuffs. And it is started here at the back neck and then it's increased for the shoulders. So that the shoulders have like this uh, kind of like sloping um, fit. And then stitches are picked up from the shoulder line and worked uh, over both, both sides of the neck and joined at the front neck. Then the whole piece is joined in the round at the underarm. And lastly, um, the stitches for the sleeves are picked around the armholes. They're knitted in the round in a 2x2 two two ribbing and also um, the neck stitches are knitted in the round and also in 2x2 two two, uh, ribbing. And like I said, the cuffs are folded double. So they add a bit of weight for the cuffs uh, or the sleeves so that it pulls them really nicely downwards. And little things that I added for this design is the tubular bind off at the neck edge and also at the hem. And let me just show you what it looks like when I'm wearing it. So 
So here it is and I'm wearing it just if I stand on my toes then you can see the whole of it. It looks like like this. And you can see the shoulder line and the back. And I really like the silk yarn because it makes the stitches pop out really nicely. You can really really see the cables. It has a really beautiful stitch definition and also I really love the uh, slight kind of like sheen that the silk has. So it is um, slightly shiny. And I was planning just quickly grab from here. I have um, Knitting for Olives silk yarn in almost every color here at home. Well, not really, but almost. Um, so I have the colorway putty, and this is like kind of like creamy of white color. So I was thinking about using these for a second Karina T shirt. So Planning to use these, but yeah, this is the Karina T-shirt. It looks really nice if you kind of like tuck it in the skirt, top of the skirt. And I've been already using this a lot, and I know that I will use it a lot this summer. So it's kind of my new favorite. Another thing that I have already released my second. Um, summer pattern for this year, the first sleeveless pattern, also in Knitting for Olives Pure Silk, is the Olive Tank, and I have made two versions of it, so one is green and one is black, and the pattern has two options, actually it has three options, um, so first option is to have kind of like this um, identical front and back. So the front and back scoop just as low, so they are identical, the same scoop. Or for this second one, I make, if you can see because it's black. I love black knits. Um, black is one of my favorite colors to wear, so I often wear uh, a black t-shirt at home or a black black sweater but um, for a knitwear designer I think black is quite hard um, because <laughs> you kind of like lose all the details you have to have like like this like a really stark um, side light for all any of the details to show but here you can see just put the shoulder in the right place. You can see that um, one side is a lot deeper than the other side. So this is the second option that you can do. And you can actually wear this either way. You can wear it so that the, the lower scoop is at the front or so that the lower scoop is at the back if you want to show a bit more back or a bit more cleavage um, it works either way and for the green one this is also written in the instructions so if you want you can also add a bit more length to the back so it has some short row shaping at the at the bottom hem so you can see that it is slightly longer at the back and I think this is really good especially if you're going to have um, the same scoop on also the front and the back so by adding a bit of length for the back you kind of like get a nice shaping and you also make sure that you always wear the top the same way doesn't really matter but but yeah if you want you can always wear it the same way. I didn't add the um, short row shaping for this one because uh, I wanted to keep it straight so that I can wear it which way I want and I already been wearing it both ways. So I think this is a really nice uh, basic summer um, top and 
like kind of like this wardrobe staple pattern that can be worn with anything. I think it goes really nicely with a, a skirt or maybe like loose linen pants. You can kind of like the same way tuck the, the hem into the pants. I think it would look really nice. Also, I think this would go really beautifully into like not so formal uh, summer party dressing um, with heels and some jewelry. Maybe maybe with a flowy skirt or silk pants or something like that. Or a blazer. I think it would look really nice with a blazer as well. And it could also be worn as a vest so you can throw it over a t-shirt really nicely. Or, or a white colored shirt or anything actually. So I think it's super nice for that. And this is also knitted top down. So it started at, at the top of the shoulders. Uh, first you work one side of the neck, then the other one, join them together, work until the armholes and then the same for the uh, back side. First one side, second side, join and then join everything in the round at the underarm and then it's just in the round. I added some increases to both sides so it has like a very slight A line shape. So I think that is really nice because I want my summer tops to kind of fit quite tightly around the bust so your bra doesn't show all the time but then I want some flowiness so I don't want it to be like kind of like skin tight so I want some flowiness because that keeps you cooler so that's why I kind of like the A line shape for um, my summer patterns. And like I said, it's Knitting for Olives uh, Pure Silk, held double, but you could use any fingering weight yarn or even one strand of DK weight yarn for this one. And the green one is Chloe Olive and this is Coal. So that's those. And I have released one more summer pattern for um, this year. The next one is coming on a Friday, so I will show that to you soon as well. So these are the Salt Krokan t-shirts. So this is a linen weight, um, linen weight, a linen, a sport weight linen yarn, I was going to say. Um, and for this one, I used Isager's new uh, Trio 2 yarn and I think the colorway, I can't remember if this is linen, maybe? I have to check, I will write the um, yarn names below this video and this is uh, the navy, navy blue. And this one is worked with uh, Darum Naturas um, Antigo and I think it's got lean and a more door. So I have the yarn somewhere over here. Yeah. This so this is the yarn for that. And yeah, it's called lean. And it's a sport weight 100 percent linen yarn. And I'll show you the Isagar yarn. I have it over here. So this is the yarn can get it to focus here yeah, here this is the navy colorway and it wasn't 100 percent linen it's 50 uh, percent linen 30 percent uh, cotton and 20 percent lyocell so here you can see that one as well so both are sport weight yarns and i wanted to make kind of like this super easy, uh, very classic striped t-shirt and just show it to you a bit more closely. So it has neck shaping, so short rows here at the back neck to add a bit more length to the back so that the, the front neck will scoop nicely. 
and the neck band is knitted in stockinette stitch and then folded double so it looks like really really nice and smooth and it's the same for for the cuffs so they are folded double and also for the hem so it doesn't have any ribbing anywhere so very very basic i'll just go and put this on so you can see how it looks like when i'm wearing it so here we have it this is how it looks like like i said super basic super easy going slightly oversized and boxy fit and here is the back the instructions have a little part about how to knit uh, jokeless stripes so you will get um, easy nice matching stripes that doesn't have the little jug on them and this is something that I've also been wearing quite a lot and this is going to be a summer favorite for me as well so I think this goes really nicely I think it looks really nice with the skirt that I'm wearing at the moment but also with jeans or or linen pants and you could go crazy with colors as well. I think it would look really nice with like some tangerine stripes and then maybe white. I think that would be so, so good. So this is the Salt Krogan uh, tea. And <clears throat> the name comes from one of my childhood favorite books. And it was also made into a TV. Had I don't know if it was a series or just a movie or a series of movies, I can't remember. But it's the Swedish author called uh, Astrid Lindgren and she had this book about um, families that went uh, every summer to live on an island just outside, I think, Stockholm. And the, the name of the island was uh, Salt Krokan, uh, which means like a salt crow island. So I think that was the perfect name for this one because this uh, reminds me of kind of like a, a slightly retro, the kind of uh, things that we wore when we were kids and, and something very classic, something you could have worn in the, in the 50s when you went on a boat to the Salt Crow Island. So that's why the name Salt Krokan. So this pattern is also already available on Ravelry and I would rate this quite beginner friendly um, especially if you leave out the, the neck uh, short rows. So those are optional. You can just continue straight to the um, knitting in the round after the neck band if you don't want to make the short rows but short rows usually um, improve the fit of uh, knitwear so they are made so that for example in this case that the back is slightly longer than the front so that will improve the fit making the neck scoop slightly lower so it doesn't kind of like uh, climb up here and start gathering in the front so it improves the fit and makes it nicer to wear. But other than that, I would break this very beginner friendly. So if you are new to my patterns, uh, this is something that you could easily start with. And this would also be really nice in a unicolor. I have to think about making making one in, in, in just like unicolor without the stripes because it's such a really nice, classic, easygoing shape. Next is the Diona tea and if you remember I made the Diona pullover should I just go and get it okay. I'll go and put this on at the same time as I go and grab the Diona tea so I'll be back very soon so so here I am back with uh, another <laughs> outfit change uh, like I said, this is the Diana T, and here is the. I just have to turn the sleeve around because I've been wearing this a lot. This is the matching Diana pullover. So this is something that I released already back in maybe it, it was very early 
February, I think. And for this one I used um, Derarum Naturas Yulose, um, Chloe Poivre Blanc, and I think it was Knitting for Olives Silk Mohair. But I will write everything below this video and also add the link to this pattern. And since I've been wearing the Diona pullover so much, um, I decided to make a summer version of it. So here you can see it. I used, uh, again, <laughs> Knitting for Olives Pure Silk because it's my absolutely favorite summer yarn. Uh, this color is called Lamb's Ears. Uh, it's a funny name, I know. Um, but I really love wearing silk in the summer. First of all, silk has the quality that it kind of feels hot if the weather is cold, but it feels cold or cool if the weather is really hot. So even though this is knitted with two strands of fingering weight yarn, so it equals kind of like DK weight yarn, it won't be very hot. Well, of course, if it's like 40 degrees outside, I would say this is a bit too much, but um, for like normal Finnish summer weather, I think this is just perfect. And I've been knitting with this yarn um, for maybe five summers already. And everything that I have worn um, or knitted with it, I have worn a lot. And the yarn is still in perfect condition even after five years and um, hundreds of hours in, in use. And I've been washing those summer knits more than I wash my normal knits because of sunscreen and sweat and, and so on. Everything just get dirt, gets dirtier in the summer than in the winter, I think. Especially because you don't really wear anything under. Um, if you have a sweater, you always have something under it. At least I do. Maybe a t-shirt or, or a sleeveless top or like something like that. But for summer, there's basically nothing uh, between the, the knit and, and your skin. So they will get a lot more skin contact, a lot more like sweat, uh, like sunscreen, everything than your normal sweater. So they need to be washed more often. So I think this is just, just a perfect yarn for that. This is not uh, like a paid promotion. This is just my personal opinion. It's my favorite summer yarn and um, I just want to share this information with you. But anyway, Again, you can see how beautifully the silk yarn works with, with the cables. So it really makes them like shine, it's super beautiful. And I really like how it turned out. I changed the neckline a bit. The original one has a tighter neck and also it has like this longer funnel neck. And this has a twisted rib, double folded, slightly wider neckline and also of course shoulder sleeves and I made this one slightly cropped so it's a bit bit um, shorter than um, the sweater version but I kind of like my summer tops slightly so shorter than, than the um, winter ones especially because I really like like I said I like tucking tucking them in in pants or in my skirt so I think the shorter cut looks, uh, or the crop, cropped look, um, looks better. Um, especially if you have like a high-waisted um, skirt or something, something like that. So I think that this look really nice. But of course, um, the the body is straight. So if you don't want to have a cropped T-shirt, this is isn't even that cropped. So it could easily be even shorter than this. So I think this is kind of like a medium, medium length and not kind of like cropped at all. But if you want to make it longer, then you can just add a bit more pattern in the cable, some more rows in there and just make it suit your own body measurements or your own style. You can easily also make the, the sleeves longer if you want. But I'm releasing this pattern on Friday. So Friday. <laughs> And another pattern that I'm going to be releasing at the same time is this one. It's my little 
Bargat scarf. So this is kind of like my classic take on those like square shaped silk scarves. So I wanted to have something that is quite lightweight but still still big. And I think you can just like tie it around your neck like this or then put it on the back like this. Maybe tie in the front. So this is also really nice look for, for it. Or you can just kind of like roll it like this. And then add it add a knot to it. So there's so many different ways to wear it or even over your head. So this is a new pattern that I'm also releasing on Friday at the same time as the Diana T. So bar dot scarf and again anything for olives silk yarn it started in the middle the same way as i start my top down hats so it started here with a circular cast on and then just increased every other round until it's big enough and to give it a bit more interesting i added some some stripes but you could easily modify the stripes, add more colors, add a wider stripes. So this is the kind of pattern that is easily modified, like I said. You could also do some color blocking, for example, this part could be a third color. I already have yarns for a second one. I just haven't had the time to, to start that one yet because of the book and everything else, summer sock knit alongs and everything else that I've been making, but it's really, really nice. And again, you can see the drape and, and the sheen of, of the silk silk yarn. So that's the bandit scarf, of course, named after Brigitte Bardot, but of course, also after one of my favorite restaurants in Helsinki, the Bistro Bardot. And then it's this one. This is the sunset camisole. Just take this up. So this is one of my favorite makes for this year. So it's a very basic um, camisole pattern with like this um, triangle. So it started at the top of the triangle you make four four identical triangles and then they are all joined in the round and again the body has some increases on the, on the sides to to get that like flowy a-line shape and the same kind of like folded bottom so it looks really minimalistic it doesn't have any ribbing uh, to add any more elements to it, so it's very, very basic. And then, of course, there's the frill. So the stitches for the frill are lastly, like, started at here at the top and then picked up along the body. And, and then there's going to be the, some increases to add to the frill. And for this one, it's the same yarn that I used for my made the scarf attached at the hanger so for this one so it's Dererum Nadoras Antigone it was the linen sport weight linen yarn and I think the color was called mandarin so it's really beautiful burnt orange and also the linen has super nice sheen to it I have already yarns picked up for the second one so you can see I have a lot of things that I'm going to be casting on. This is such a nice top. I think this is kind of like the perfect thing because it goes everywhere. You could easily wear this to 
um, kind of like a low-key wedding even, like a beach wedding with, with a skirt or like silk pants. Or I think it would look really nice if you had like this sequin pants or sequin skirt. That would be so nice as well. Or it could be worn at the beach, um, at the beach party, uh, for a date, <laughs> anywhere, even at the office, maybe with a added blazer on, on top of it. So with, with like suit pants and a blazer. So I think it would look really, really nice. So here's the yarn that I'm going to use for, for the second, second one. It's, um, Malabrica yarn, Sura, and the colorway is called Pearl. So these are the leftovers from my Kutar tea that I made two years ago. And I've been thinking what to use these for, and I think that one would be perfect for, for these yarns. So this is a blend of 50% um, mulberry silk, 25% merino wool and 25% linen. So it has the sheen of, of silk and kind of like that uh, roughness of texture um, that linen has so that it will keep, the, the frill will keep in shape and not just like um, drape down. So that's going to be my second sunset camisole. The pattern is coming at the end of the month. I don't have the exact date yet, but by the end of the month. So one of one of the favorites. And I'll show this one to you next. So this is also leftovers from this project. As you can see, it's the same yellow yarn. So it was the Antigone in Colorway Mordor. And this is the Salutariet bag. Salutariet means um, marketplace in Swedish. And it's especially the name of the main market square in, in southern Helsinki at the end of the Esplanade Park. So that's why I named it Salutariet because it's kind of like this very basic market bag and I've been wanting to make one of like these knitted bags for a couple of years already but I, I can do some crochet but I'm not good at it so I kind of like wanted to find something else uh, like a knitted pattern that doesn't that, so that I don't have to do some crochet and I finally found this kind of like perfect symmetrical pattern. It looks like this you can see. And it's a really nice, it's super easy once you get the hang of it. This is started at the bottom with kind of like the same way you start the toe up socks with Judy's Magic Cast On. And then it's knitted in the round and, and the top, I folded the top so that it has a bit more durability. And the pattern will also have uh, instructions for knitted straps, but I wanted to add leather ones for, for mine. So this is going to be my summer market bag, beach bag, favorite knitting bag. And I also I added a bit of stockinette stitch at the bottom, so the things you have in it, for example, if you have your knitting needles to, so that they don't fall off. This is also currently being tested, so I'm hoping to release the pattern um, at the very beginning of June. And two more things, and then I'll show you what I'm knitting at the moment. Um, these two, this is the Mahla top. It's currently being tested. The pattern is coming out in early June, and then. This is the Wood Anemone t-shirt. I haven't blocked it yet, so don't look too closely. I could go and put this on and talk about it a bit and then show this to you as well.
So here we have it and again it's slightly cropped but it's really nice for, for summers and the yarn that I used for this, I don't have the exact colorway here but here's another colorway it's um, Pasquale Regions so we can focus let's see if the camera wants to focus on it at all hello just want to focus it doesn't want to focus but I will <laughs> write it below this video um, it's the region so it's recycled cotton and this is kind of like DK light versed weight yarn and 95% cotton, 5% other fibers. So this is another colorway of the same yarn. And I made this little t-shirt out of it. Um, I started to make um, a different design with, with the yarn, but uh, at some point I kind of didn't, <laughs> didn't feel, I had to like the first. Yeah, it is great. I'm working on something new, kind of like vibe. And then suddenly I realized I didn't really like it anymore. So then I kind of um, ripped it back and and um, decided to use the yarn for something else. So this is what I made. So it started at the neckband, then increased uh, in the lace and bubble pattern to full width and it's a really nice, really cute little project. So this is currently being tested at the moment and I'm hoping to release the pattern at the beginning of June. And also the Mahla top. This is something that I made already a while ago, but because of the book and everything else, I didn't really have the headspace to concentrate concentrate on pattern writing so I only managed to finish the pattern uh, a few weeks ago and it's currently being test knitted. So this is started at the back neck and then uh, it's increased to create a lot, like kind of like slightly sloping shoulders and then it's worked flat until the armholes and there's going to be also some um, increases at the armhole for, for some shaping and then again the stitches are picked along the shoulders and the, the fronts are worked joined at the front neck and then worked until armhole then it's in the round to the bottom and and then the neck band and and the Sleeve etchings are picked from the body and there's a really nice honeycomb cable pattern as you can see over here and also some bubbles like I said uh, kind of like my design favorite some more cables and some moss stitch on the side so this is like a really easy going summer top that could also be worn as a vest so it's not just for summer or not just for hot weather. For this one I used Pasquale Sole and I'll write the yarn name and and um, call my name below this video because I don't have it here with me and I can't remember what it was but it was also a sport weight yarn. So these are the things that I have already finished and then I will show you the things that I'm currently knitting. So let me show you what I'm knitting at the moment, I already showed you this little beginning of a sock. But this is... Let's see what else I'm making at the moment. Um, I got so inspired by this uh, wood anemone top that I'm still wearing here as you can see. That I decided to cast on a, a summer top design with the same a stitch pattern so here you can see this is the front piece so it's going to have i-cord straps at the back so it's now long enough 
so that I can join it at the underarm. So it has, you can see, the same bubbles, the same leaf-like stitch going on. And for the back, I'm going to use the same same pattern, but the back doesn't have this uh, V next, but it's going to have like a straight, this one, this one is straight, and then the lace pattern and, and the increases on the side. And then I will join the parts together and and lastly um, add the um, straps. So it's going to be some more lace and then the rest is going to be stuck in that stitch. So it's going to be slightly a similar shape, shape to the sunset camisole that I showed you, except that it doesn't have the v-neck at the back, it has a higher neck and of course it doesn't have the frill but it has the, the lace on on the front and the back and for this one I'm I'm using the same yarn that I'm um, used for for this so it's the Pasquale red jeans let's see if it will focus better this time yeah looks better now uh, this is uh, kind of like this lemon colorway so the colorway is number seven so red jeans that's the yarn that I'm using for for the top boot anemone top that I just showed you and another thing that I'm making at the moment is a Lume t-shirt version of the Lume pullover I haven't gotten that far with this just yet because it has kind of like craved uh, more concentration to follow the stitch pattern that <laughs> I have had at the moment. So I have kind of like craved something more simple, like more of a stockinette stitch. But um, it's going to be the same as my Lume pullover, but with um, lighter yarns. This is a DK weight yarn and also a slightly tighter gauge. But it's going to have the same um, flower pattern on the yoke and then it's going to have short sleeves. So I'm using Sunness Garn Duo for this one and this is the colorway 2650 and this is 2336. So this is the combination that I'm using for, for this one. I started it with um, tubular custom, so it's really nice, stretchy. It has a shorter neck than the, the original pullover version, so it's more suitable for summer. So that is something I'm knitting at the moment, so maybe next time I film, unless it's in, in December. <laughs> it looks like that at the moment, by the rate that I'm making this these videos, but let's hope I can get to make another one sooner. Um, this is something that I already planned last summer, but then I didn't have time to make it, but this is something that I have been uh, thinking and dreaming about making for, for a longer time. It doesn't look like much just yet. This is uh, Knitting for Olives Pure Silk. I don't know how many times I have mentioned it in uh, this video already. The color is called Haze and it's kind of like purplish, brownish gray. It's a really beautiful color. So it's going to be a summer top and this is, this is the, the front part that you can see here but it looks a bit weird at the moment. It's not going to be as wide as this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add an eye cord that goes around the neck. So it will be put through this little opening that I made for the top. So it's like a folded double and, and there's like this part over here. So the uh, eye cord will go into this little tube that I made. Just put my fingers in it. Into this hole. And I want the eye cord to kind of like gather the top of the neck, like scrunch it 
together like this. So the eye cord goes from here to back. So it has like this really, really beautiful fold at the top. Like I said, it doesn't look like much yet, but um, just let me work on it for a bit. And I just cast it on for the back. So the back is going to be in two panels. So instead of like the front, it's, it's just one panel. The back is going to have two panels. So it has also like this extra slit in the middle. Slight some increases on the sides. So it gets slightly like this um, uh, triangle look, but not too much. So that it will have enough fabric at the, at the top for, for like folding here or gathering, smoking, I don't know what, what it's called, but okay, it's going to have a, like this eye guard around the neck that will keep all the place, uh, pieces in place and make it scrunch at the top. So that's <laughs> something that I'm uh, working on at the moment, but uh, you can see that I haven't made a video since January because I had so much to show you in this video. I hope you have enjoyed it and if you like my videos, um, please subscribe to my channel so you will always get a notification when I put out a new video. It might be soon or it might be not so soon, but anyway, you won't miss a new video from me. Um, thanks for watching. I hope, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it and see you soon. Bye!